you so happy? <laughs> because, man, I've been wanting to make this podcast for a long time now. Yeah, but we've just been fully booked and it's like 1 a.m. right now. <laughs> 1 a.m., um, we in the grind for show. Bro, we're not in the grind. We just finished school and we're still pulling all-nighters. Oh my god <laughs> that's that's the life of an entrepreneur man we're, we're the type of people who jump off a cliff and then build the parachute on the way down hey, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what's up guys and welcome to the first episode of the medporn podcast the medporn podcast is here to help those pre-medical students who are confused about the medical pathway and just navigating studying as well as everything they're doing in life and especially college life as a pre-medical student. Now, my name is Jahangir, and I'm a second year pre-medical student, biology major at Texas A&M University. And my name is Irkin, and I'm also a second year pre-med major. Um, I'm also a biomedical sciences major at A&M. Nice. Yeah. So today, um, a lot of people have been asking us, uh, whether through social media, and a lot of my friends in the community, they asked us, hey, if you could go back as a freshman on before your first day and um, just if you knew the stuff you knew uh, after finishing your first year already, yeah. what would you tell yourself um, that you're a freshman self before the first day? What, what are some things you would uh, want to know before starting your first day as a pre-med uh, and, and stuff like that? So we're just going to go over that. Dude, that was just... Man, that first day, like, I don't know about you, but I had, like, such jitters and, like, I was so nervous because, like, high school life, so high school is pretty much, like, every, the teachers tell you where to go, what to do, you eat lunch at a certain time and stuff like that, and maybe at, at that time in high school, it was, like, really boring because someone's telling you what to do, but now you're in college and you have to do all of it on your own. You also have to cook on your own. You don't have your parents around. You don't have, a, like, a full fridge. You got to put that fridge right. in. You got to, you got to, um... Just do your own laundry like it's such a hassle and just me going into that first day i had to figure all that out and i was just i was really nerve-wracked because it was such a different experience just that one day was so different from high school i didn't know what i was doing where i was going that was just pretty much day one that's pretty much it but what about you yeah same here i think that's just the general consensus consensus yeah. of everyone um you know of most seniors who end up going uh, you know, to college, they always have that pre-college jitters. Mm -hmm. uh, even as a freshman in high school, I had those. Um, but yeah, that it is just it is a big jump, and yeah. that's where it kind of brings me to like my first tip. Um, I think it's just at the time is to find balance and find uh, because you you're as a pre-med you have a bunch of these hard classes. I'm not gonna lie, they're hard. They're they're yeah. they're a bit yeah, difficult, definitely. you know. So you have hard classes, and then like Jahangir said, you have uh, your own responsibilities now as an adult. Yeah. So now you you have to find balance. Otherwise, it's very easy to tip the scale in college. You can easily you know lose balance and focus on one thing or uh, and just be a workaholic or not be good in school you know yeah, it's, it's it's good to find that balance so you don't get burnt out as well so my first tip is to find balance both mentally physically and emotionally and you know for me that was going to the gym joining the clubs and just networking yeah, yeah. and it's just it's just experience like you're gonna have to dip your toes in before you actually get in the water right so it's just that small experience that we can't teach you nobody else can tell you what that college experience is like i mean i've asked a lot of college students like before going into high school i, I asked a lot of pre-meds like what's college like and they all have different answers but i heard this one senior who was basically telling me that everyone's gonna have a different experience and you're just gonna find out for yourself because nobody can tell you what college is going to be like everyone's going to have a different take on college maybe it was the best time of their life maybe it's the worst time of their life it's going to be your own personal tailored experience all we can really tell you is our story and just say that you're going to have a different experience that might be far different from ours or maybe even similar to ours so me going into that first day, I had like calculus and biology and uh, chemistry, just the basic classes of pre-med that you have. Yeah. And just me going into those lectures, first off, 
the professor you're gonna have a professor that's teaching like 300 students so oh, yeah. professor so, doesn't really even care about you you really have to introduce yourself there's sure. no roll calling there's no um like icebreakers there's nothing like that because in college right. it's serious i mean you're really paying for your education so it's pretty serious but you go into a classroom filled with like 300 students that some of you some of which you've never met and that's another thing that i realized is that sometimes it can be hard making friends but one piece of advice that i learned is that everyone is just like you they yeah are in college they just got this shock of college that they want to find friends they're really open to finding friends and you, if you realize that it's really easy to find friends but that's pretty much one thing i realized with like the social part of college is that everyone like as a freshman everyone is the same where they want to be um inviting they want to have friends they want to be friendly so it's just knowing that you can really make some long-lasting friends yeah, yeah, I, I 100% agree. I remember even at my, um, uh, most colleges have the student conferences before and registration. Even then, all the freshmen, you know, they, they put you in groups and um, it's very easy to make friends, I would say, yeah. as, as a freshman. So just, you know, use that. College is, especially that freshman year, it's a very, um, it's a golden year. It's a golden opportunity. It's that first year where you're genuinely by yourself. Um, you have all the adult responsibility, but you still have to um, do the responsibilities of school and you know pre med as well. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, on the on the topic of professors too, one thing that I wish I would have told my older self is to like Jahangir said, go introduce myself to the professor and kind of just get to know him and um, get to know him better. But for me, most importantly, was to know the style of the professor. Oh yeah. Oh, their teaching style, um, the way they uh, they they make them their exams themselves, mm -hmm. right? And um, each professor has a different style. Some have you know crazy tests, some don't. But if you just you know go there and pick his brain, uh, you know, and they're 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 there to help. You know, a lot of people sometimes are like, oh, professors can be mean, but yeah, at the end of the day. Uh, it's just you got to get to know them um, and pick their brain. They they like when you do that for the most part. And so I would just get a feel for how they do their homeworks, how they um, do their tests, and take a look at their practice exams just beforehand. Even when the before the first quiz comes out, I would sit there and just grab a baseline and also like study his syllabus a lot. Like just get a good grasp on the syllabus too. Yeah, definitely. And um, knowing about the exams is just so crucial because uh, my first semester in about like chemistry, it was most and Eric and I had the same chemistry professor. Yeah. It was mostly the professor that her his um, practice exams were basically the same as the actual exam. Mm -hmm. So if you knew the practice exam and a bunch of conceptual stuff, then you knew the actual exam. But then last or this latest semester where I could not the same chemistry <laughs> professor yeah. but um this chemistry <clears throat> professor was much more different than our past chemistry professor where he didn't base his questions mostly on the practice exam yeah. and it was mostly from maybe past quizzes the textbook textbooks so you really have to know what resources your professor is pulling from either it's slides that he or she has created or the class textbook now i'm not gonna lie with you guys being a pre-med and going to those first year classes like just biology general chemistry even like calculus you're not going to have the best professor yeah and you might have to resort to self-studying and now my first semester and i think we should just focus on our conversation like for this part just not like first semester and stuff sure, yeah. but like first week all leading up to my actual exam i was using the same study methods from high school because i took ap biology and AP chemistry. And those pretty much transitioned into uh, the real college biology and college chemistry. So that really helped. And if you guys are taking AP classes or considering ta taking AP classes, I highly recommend them. Likewise. Even if it's even if it's like a science AP class and you might not get credit for it, yeah. it helps in the long run just so much. But using my study methods from high school, I did get, I did score well on my biology exam, but not so well on my chemistry exam. So that's when I realized that you really have to adapt as a pre-medical student because yeah. sometimes you're going to have good exams. Sometimes you're going to have bad exams. The only thing you could really do is just learn from it and just 
try to adapt and tweak your study methods. And that's one of the biggest things that I learned and one of the tips that I'd say is that be adaptable. Your study methods from high school may not work in college. And even the study methods that worked in your past professor may not work in the next one. So you're gonna have to adapt. The only way you can adapt is taking that first exam, understanding how that professor is creating that exam like Eric was talking about. And just going on from there and tailoring that study method for you, tailoring your study uh, system for you. There's no one best study method, study system that works for everyone. So you're just going to have to figure that out. But what was that experience like for you? Just trying to figure that out. Did like your high school study methods work in college? And how do you like sort of adapt to that? Yeah, um, it's, it's about there's this quote. By Conor McGregor. Um, he, yeah. says, he says, improvise, adapt, overcome. And I think that's like the one of the pillars of being a pre-med. Yeah, um, definitely. You, you're thrown in the deep end really quickly. You're the, And then you have to adapt very fast. Uh, otherwise, you're going to get left behind in the competition. Even applying to med school is very competitive. So you have to, have to kind of get ahead of the competition and adapt. Um, for me... Some of them did work from high school, like my flashcards, active recall, uh, me and Jahangir both implemented that at an early age as our sophomores in high school, and that helped a lot. But for example, uh, my first semester of bio, uh, just pre-med bio, the general bio, I, the, the professor did fill in the blank notes. And in my whole high school career, I have never did fill in the blank notes. So now I'm... High school career. <laughs> yeah. And then the first day I have fill in the blank notes, um, my iPad hasn't been ordered yet. I ordered an iPad, um, which I feel like is a good investment. That's another cool tip. If you can't afford it, and if you want to make that investment, an iPad's a good investment. But you don't need it. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So I was just sitting there. Um, he did fill in the blank notes. And also, they don't give you notes. The paper notes. I know some... Uh, in classes in high school they gave you paper printed notes and all that no it's really you are by yourself uh, in those beginning days so uh, yeah I had to adapt to fill in the blank notes I've never taken it I didn't really like the style at first the way he taught uh, my professor but uh, like I just had to adapt Um, I changed I tweaked a little bit of my flashcard methods and you know I talked to Jahangir I asked him for his advice and help He's my number one friend, so I had to... appreciate him. Yeah, yeah. And so, what did I do for fill in the blank? Um, I I went back to Anki. Uh, I think I did, like, more closed deletions Mm, just to adapt to the the style of fill in the blank. If you don't know what Anki is, uh, we have a tutorial, and we highly recommend you use it. It's on our YouTube channel. Um, I had to do that. For chemistry with our professors, mm, like, yeah, like how Jahangir said, even if it's the same class, like chemistry, and if you get different professors, they're going to, it's most likely going to change. Um, and I had to adapt more on the conceptual side for my latest semester, which, uh, you know, you know how he did it with the conceptual questions. Yeah. Like Jahangir said in the beginning, uh, our first semester, our chemistry professor, It was very similar to the practice exam, but the latest one with with this second semester, I had to adapt and I I, I switched my training method for our studying method um, and to better adapt to this professor specifically. And and the same goes with like calculus and stats. You know, I always had to just change it up depending on the professor uh, and the class. So, yeah. Yeah. And um, just talking about pretty much first year i think we should talk about like maybe some personal stuff as well like our experiences with maybe first week and then uh like first exam second third so okay. pretty much for my first week at a and uh, like like first day it was just trying to understand the whole uh, how everything worked how the whole college system sort of operated and just from then just going through like syllabus and stuff like that but after the first week uh, I went back home and I was just thinking to myself, like, 
this is a new level. Mm-hmm. Like high school was high school was like child's play compared to what we're in right now. Yeah. High school was just child's play. I mean, you could ask the teacher, can I get extra credit on this? If you don't score well on your exams in AP classes, you can get like bonus points. It's Corrections like, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Some like stuff like <laughs> that. But in college, you can't do any of that. So it's just such a new ballpark. And it, you just really have to adapt to it. Like Eric and, Eric and I can't really help you guys with that part. We can only give you guys the best advice that we can give in our personal stories and whatnot. But that's just something you're going to have to experience for yourself. And that's what leads to maturity, not yeah. only as a student, but as a person yourself, where you're put in a situation where you have to adapt within yourself. You get the choice of if you succeed in college, Mm -hmm. if you take care of yourself, you take care of your grades, uh, you feed yourself well, you get enough sleep, you get to choose that, or you get to choose to say, screw all all the academics, I'll pull all nighters, um, I'll barely eat. It's really your choice. And that's where maturity really leads to in high or college, which a lot of people think say that in college, that's where you become mature. That's where you turn into an adult is because you're not put into real life, like actual real life, because maybe your parents are paying or scholarships, or maybe even you are paying, which you are pretty much in real life, but it gives you that little slight edge in the real world where you have your own responsibilities. You're responsible for yourself, you're responsible for your grades, and that is what leads to real maturity going through college. So that's another thing that I realized going into college, my first year is that you, this is your year of maturity. You're not a kid anymore. You're not a teenager anymore where mm-hmm. you can go to football games on Friday or you can do this, you can do that. You're not a child anymore, especially if you're a pre-medical student. Oh, yeah. You have a lot of pressure on you. So you're not a child anymore. You're an adult now. And you just have to realize that and go through that experience yourself. You're going to have different experience than me. You're going to have different experience than Eric and, and a lot of other people. So that's what college is pretty much is for as pre-meds is maturing. So then we could actually be mature enough to get into pretty much medical school and so on. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Professionalism. Mm-hmm. It, it starts early and, and they force you to do that early and you, you can see it. Um, a lot of competition within your classmates. Like you have one who's already done thousands of uh, clinical hours uh, shadowing. He had a published paper as a freshman, you know, and then you have this guy over here who's uh, still hung over from the, the, you know, Saturday night. Yeah. So, and then you're in the middle, you know, you just kind of have to, you know, find that, find that balance. Like I mentioned earlier, the first thing, which find that balance, find what works best for you. And like Jahangir said, we can't help you with that. And we're not here to scare you about like, Oh, it's pre-med, but you know, you, you know what you're getting into. It's, you know, you, if you want to go into that uh, field, you know, the, the hours that come with it, the studying that comes with it. Um, but, with that also comes the responsibility and yeah. the ability to find that balance. That is maturity in its essence is like oh, yeah. finding balance, you know, and we still struggle with that ourselves today. Um, but that's just, you know, the whole motto is to adapt. Um, you know, to, to just take a, take a quick step back on the first day before you guys go, I know if you guys have conferences, just take note of where all the, those buildings are. Mm-hmm. And before like those first classes, those days start, look at your schedule and go on your, the GPS or the map that your campus has and just go and find your classes beforehand. Yeah. That's a, or that's like a, the day before, like go through all your classes. Yeah. Cause that's what I did. I found like all the classes that I need to go to and I just went through that route. So then when tomorrow I won't be late to all my classes, won't be late for all the important information and things like that. But then that's one thing that I realized is that first semester is all about just adapting to college life. Second semester is when you get the groove, you know what you're doing, you know how to take care of yourself, when to sleep, just all this other stuff. You have your system built and now you actually get to uh, do some real work. Like instead of having excuses from last semester, the first semester in college where Maybe you slipped up on your grades and your excuse, which might be a viable excuse, was that it's just you're you're trying to adapt to college life. But your second semester is when you've adapted. You understand what the system is like and now it's time for you to really hammer down your grades and pretty much lock in. So that's pretty much what I learned last semester compared to this one that we just finished 
is that that first semester in college, absolute first, that's all dedicated towards adapting to college. Yeah, so, figuring it out. Exactly. So don't blame yourself for not being able to get an A in some of your classes, mm -hmm. not being able to get a 4.0, because yeah. especially we're pre-medical students, we have to care about our GPA as well as research hours, clinical hours, MCAT, all this other stuff. Yeah. So don't hurt yourself. Don't, what's, I don't know what the phrase is. No, but don't put yourself down. Yeah. Because it, it, like, yeah, like John Hunger said, it's that first semester and it's okay. M even med school, uh, I, I knew this, um, one of one of our banker mm -hmm. um and then is it our banker no anyway i i know this the this medical admissions officer yeah um i, I was emailing with them there to see if we can uh, get her on a podcast one day or just to do a medporium thing but she was talking about like we know we can see that freshman uh semester that first half of that freshman year like we know it's okay we're not going to just cancel you right out just because you got a b or a c you know as long as you sit there and you tried your best and you improved each time even if it's just one percent that's that's important and they important and they like that they like to see that preferably actually sometimes mm -hmm. they like to see that um but yeah so like jahangir said don't put yourself down and um my my first semester wasn't even that good at all it was should i i barely made it but um now like we were Still talking made it though yeah we made it but after adapting and stuff my grades you know greatly improved that second semester i knew what to do and i knew how to find that balance for that second semester exactly yeah so let's talk about some of our classes that we took <clears throat> like we both obviously took intro to bio intro to chem mm -hmm. and calculus but what's that other class that you took Oh, I took intro to health disparities and law ethics, um, How's stuff that like that. That one's good. You have to. I really enjoyed that class. Really? Yeah, I really did. It showed oh. the it showed the other side of medicine. You know, they always talk about, you know, cutting it out and suturing it back in. You know, real gunner, yeah. hard sciences. But this one was like a, I would say a soft science, and it just talked about, you know, ethics and law and yeah, racism in medicine and. Uh, racism and what's the for the females like the male and female they're just like, like sexist yeah that's, that's right. yeah sexist xenophobia there's a lot that goes into it and they have like crazy true stories of you know doctors who they're such good doctors but no one wants to go to them because you know they, they have these they never got educated on that side Mm. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah. I really enjoy that class. Um, I recommend you guys take it. Uh, you, you you will be taking those general chemistry and biology classes, and most camp most universities don't accept those science APs if you are a pre med, yep. right? So, yeah, you you have to go through those anyway because your credit won't count. Even if you get a five on the AP Bio, um, you have to register for those common base CBKs, yeah, common base knowledge classes as a pre med. Um, and a good tip is to kind of get familiar with Excel and Google Sheets, depending on what your campus uses. Taking the sheets. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so for chemistry, a lot you have for the for your labs. Um, college labs are nothing compared to mm. high school labs. I didn't it's, have any labs in high school. You didn't? No, I didn't have any labs in high school. Oh, see, we all yeah. come from different different sides. So um, some don't have. Uh, uh, labs in high school some do have labs but you know that first day um they, they'll teach you the general stuff but if you're not kind of quick and fast you know, you know you're going to be staying extra and once you take those long you know two hour labs you don't want to be there any yeah. any minute past your expected time so i would say just get used to um your your computer wizardry wizardry Wizardry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Google Sheets, uh, uh, Excel. Um, get get used to those in PowerPoint and like fast typing skills. Oh yeah. And yeah. and pick up pick up those those things. That that's for chemistry. That's what I would. Yeah, like with all those it. lab reports and stuff. Yeah. Man, dude. Dude, those are a pain. labs. Oh my god. <laughs> all right, so Eric and I pretty much every Sunday we would have this whole one to two hour spiel of us trying to wanting to quit pre-med going to like bali and day trading yeah, or yeah, leaving just the whole thing e-commerce yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know you're always going to have those days yeah. that's why it's really important like i said to network and find a support group 
Because if it wasn't for Jahangir and my friends, I would be lost. Yeah, likewise. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't even know. Like, who would I be able to complain with? <laughs> who would yeah. I be able to complain with all the labs and stuff? Like, all right, so... I still don't understand, and I'm, I'm going to talk about this right now, dude. Mm-hmm. I don't understand why we had to write a in-lab notebook when looking at a screen, writing it all down. But in biology, we could print the lab manual and just take it in. Mm-hmm. Why couldn't we do that in chemistry? And we could wear shorts in biology, and we were messing with those like toxic stuff or like bacteria that could actually hurt us but then in <laughs> chemistry you have to wear jeans for water yeah man dude like diet it's funny that was just yeah. i never understood that man i would write a lab report to my ta just to re- repent that or something right like dude i i still don't understand that man it, it take you think so much those rules it creates so much time yeah like i know y'all have the money to print it out I'm, see I'm, we're I'm, complaining about all this <laughs> stuff right now oh, i'm paying tuition i know y'all have yeah. money to print out a lab menu it's like three and there's a small not even compared to bios yeah at least give us the option for us to print it out maybe they just got to pay jimbo don't get <laughs> don't <laughs> bring a and football in here <laughs> oh, that's funny okay, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, um, yeah, chem labs, you're just going to have to power through them. Definitely have a support group. Like, if I wouldn't be able to do it with the air candy because you got to find someone to complain with. I mean, it's fun. For sure, yeah, you know? it's fun. And then you just get right back to it. Yeah, you just get right back to it. Like, you both say, like, I want to quit this right now. Like, let's just leave this whole thing. Monday, you just go straight to lab, and it's just like yeah. 9 to 5. Like, it's just routine. But yeah, just having that whole, I think, like, complaining just like you know yeah. that you're still gonna be with it but it's kind of like complaining with a friend like man why like we were just talking about in lab notebooks where it's just like you know you get to talk about it you get to argue about it you get to be in the same emotional room where like as as humans ourselves like we're very social people and we also love interactions like connections like this mm-hmm. and when we can connect to something like having this whole uh, bad emotion against this one like <laughs> lab notebook. You know, it's it's yeah. it's very ha- it's very satisfying. It's very happy because you're both talking about something you both have high emotions for, and it's just really fun to talk about. Yeah, something that's like that. good. You know, if you have high emotion, that shows passion. Like it does, yeah, yeah. It, that's that's a cool thing. Um, I noticed that whenever I was shadowing and working at Houston Methodist, yeah. and the doctors that I'm working with, they're so passionate that you know. Uh, they complain a lot, <laughs> you know, littlest things like the pen isn't in the right way. Yeah. Some, you know, a neurosurgeon is going to lose his, he lose his top. Yeah. Why is my pen in the, you know, he's going to, you're going to hear that too. Uh, shadowing. We should get to that later. Um, but yeah, the, 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 even at that age, they're like 50 year old professionals who've been doing this for years. They're always complaining with their nurses and their co and their anesthesiologists. Sometimes you can see them arguing with mm-hmm. the anesthesiologist. Oh man, why you got to? the bed tilted this way you know just <laughs> i think there might be a point in time where complaining there's like a fine line between complaining because you just don't want to do it yeah. or it's just like laziness or just like a bad way of complaining mm-hmm. and then the good part of complaining part, where yeah. you actually care like doctors like they complain about these little things because they want the best thing for the patients yeah because if they don't have the perfect pen what if that ink just bursts while they're writing a prescription then they have to waste time and time is so valuable as a doctor because if you're trying to go get another pen you have another patient waiting for you who submit who might be in a very urgent or serious uh medical like uh condition right. so it's those little things that doctors really care about that really shows their passion for medicine but then on the flip side complaining could be things like uh for example like we're just complaining about the little things like in lab notebooks why do we have to do this but we're not complaining about things like oh why is my professor not teaching right or man it's just my professor's fault like we should just end it off because it's just our professor's fault that's a way of complaining to give control to someone else Mm. like you're literally complaining over something and you're just putting blame on someone else like I've heard this so many times where people are always complaining about their professors saying that if I had a better professor, then I would have gotten a yeah. better grade. If, I, if my professor didn't teach this way, if my professor this, professor that, you're literally giving control to your professor. You're not giving control to yourself. That's why one uh, tactic that I implement for myself is that I always take fault for all of it. Mm-hmm. If I mess up on a grade, if I miss a quiz, anything like that, 
I make it, I make so that's my fault. Maybe in reality, it's not my fault, but I make that to my fault so then I have more control over it. Because if I tell myself that I'm the reason why I failed that exam, then I ask myself the questions of, well, how can I bounce back from the exam? That's how I give more control to myself versus if I gave control to my professor and I said it was my professor's fault, then it's a closed case and I stay closed minded and I stick to my mm. study methods that obviously don't work. So that's one thing and one tip I'd actually give you pre-meds yeah. is that you have to give it, you have to say that it is your fault. It's your fault you failed, your fault you missed the quiz, your fault you're late for lectures, it's your fault. But you need to turn it into a question of, well, if it's my fault, how can I change it? Man, that's, yeah, now, now that I, whenever you say that, because uh, we used to talk about that too, yeah. like that complaining aspect of it. Um, yeah, there is that thin line. There's like complaining just, you know, because, you know, you don't want to do it. But then there's the complaining where it shows passion and it shows that and it's good to let it out. You can't just sit here and bottle it all the uh, all the time because, you know, pre-med, pre-med is hard. So you have to let it out and, you know, um, talk and adapt with your friends as well and help your friends too. There's a saying where uh, if you there's um, you will experience some med school gunners uh, in pre-med. Oh, yeah some gunners um who are just hardcore pediatric neurosurgeon cardiothoracic plastic surgeon mm -hmm. you know um but there's a saying where it's like people um who don't want to help other people um because they're scared that they're going to give that skill to them they what it would what, what it could take them seven hours to learn versus someone who um, decides to help like three other people yeah. And then you see what I'm trying to say? Those three people, what it would take that lone person seven hours would take four people who could help each other two hours. They could you know, kind of cut it in half. Pretty much like teamwork. Yeah. It's, it's actually that mindset is created by Mr. Beast. Fun fact. Really? Yeah. He creates that mindset of his, in his team. He has a large team. But um, oh, <laughs> sorry, I went off topic there. But back to the point um, of the complaining yeah, I noticed that for my first semester, for the for the I couldn't know, I, I couldn't figure out why. For the for the love of me, I couldn't figure out why I couldn't get a handle, a grasp of my bio exams. Cause, you know, one thing about uh, in high school, you have many chances to make up your grades. You have like eight exams, twelve exams. You have twelve units to go over. Mm -hmm. In uh, in in A and M and in most campuses you have only three exams and a final. So really you, you don't uh, have much room for error. And I hopped, I didn't ask my professor how he handled, how he does his tests. I didn't ask for an extra review. I didn't ask for, you know, what, what hey, hey professor, hey prof, how's it going? Um, I just wanna know exactly which chapters are gonna be on this exam, you know, just to double check. I didn't, I didn't do any of that. And then I just did my usual high school techniques. And that first exam, I, I didn't score too well. But it was an easy, um, it was an easy unit, so I just, I, I pulled through. But then that second one came, and I did the same thing. I blamed my professor, I did. I said, ah, he just does fill in the blank notes. You know, well, 80% of all professors do that. Why am I sitting? And then I used to say, oh, he, I, he skipped that lecture, and he didn't put it on the slides. Okay, but it was said on the syllabus that I was going to, if I read the syllabus, if I asked them which chapters, anyway, it's all these little things that make a difference. A lot of people just wait until that last two, three days to, uh, um, and I'm guilty of this, but to pull an all-nighter and then, you know, you get all panicky and then you start stress eating and then you go shopping, you know, it's all, about, money management is a big key too, but um, that it, it, it's that complaining factor. I, I've, like you said, I became closed-minded after those first two exams because I was like, damn, it's my professor's fault. It's the, it's the campus's fault. The bus came late. It's, my fault. it's not my fault. It's the bus driver's fault. No, no it's not. Man. You, it, you're there, and like we said in the beginning of this video, we've been, uh, what is the word? Putting it into importance that it is your responsibility. Emphasis. 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 On responsibility, right? Wait, what, what was that accent right there? What's that accent? It's from Kanye West, his song. 
emphasis. Oh, see, I didn't know that. Yeah, I know. But anyway, I'm living in rocks most of the time. Like <laughs> most of the time, Eric always brings up this stuff, and I'm like, "Well, what? What are you talking about? Yeah. Like he's put me on Ken Carson. He's put me on Opium. Uh, like the new Gunna uh, album or the latest one. I don't know. One of one. One of one. Yeah, that one. But yeah, I pretty much that's that's me personally. But yeah. I just pretty much live under a rock. But anyway, <laughs> we just got out of topic yeah. there. But uh, what were we talking about? I don't even know, man. Complaining. Complaining this and that. Dog, we just got out of Bro, topic. Bro, what would you, would you stop me at? Um, oh, uh, emphasis. Emphasis, emphasis on emphasis. making it your responsibility. And then finally, it was too late, but I still pulled through. I passed the class and um, I, I got a decent grade in bio. What I did was after the first two exams, I was like, you know what? I need to stop blaming myself. I have to make my closed mindset into an open mindset. I have to, you know, conduct with my with with my partner here, Jahangir, and then I have to conduct with my friends. I have to uh, go to those TA hours. But that's another cool thing, man. I didn't utilize that enough. Those TAs are there uh, for two, three hours, just answering questions. That's all they do. They sit there one on one with the student, and. When I walked in one time, there wasn't much students there because he's like, well, not a lot of students show up. If you go there, they love what they teach, to be honest. That's their job. They studied all these years to be a professor. Yeah. So go and pick their brain. They love when they do that. They might not necessarily like teaching and grading, but they like talking about what they do. You go and pick their brain and see, even whenever they start speaking about their um their passion you can kind of get a sense of how the test is going to be already he will say i, I noticed that the other day mm -hmm. uh before semester ended but i was too late so that's why i would tell my freshman self is to get on it early have an open mindset and don't put the blame on anyone else yeah you know take the take full responsibility uh, jocko willenick has a good book about responsibility about a Navy SEAL commander. But anyway. Oh, good. If it's a link for that, so oh, we click, we get paid. <laughs> right? Um, but yeah, so then after I adapted, I scored well on the third exam and the final exam. I scored really well. That's what helped me to balance out. But if only I could have went back and, uh, and just adapted sooner, I could have gotten a way better grade. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of grades, also check out your campus's grading policy mm -hmm. i like i realized way too late that a and m grades by credit so uh bio and chem was a four out of four four credits total it's a four credit class and they grade you uh, an a would be four out of four a b would be three out of three out of four so my 89 is worth someone's 80 you see what i mean yeah yeah uh, ut does gpa they grade 89 is higher than an 80, but some campuses just do, um, you know, credits or GPA. So take a look at that too. It, it can help you a lot. Yeah. But, um, yeah, just that's mostly like talking about arrogance too. Mm. And also on the flip side, like maybe you did very well in your AP exams. Like you got a five in AP biology, you got a five in AP chemistry, you got a five in AP calculus, and you're still taking those classes. Don't ever think that because you did so well in those AP classes, you're going to do even better mm, in college yeah. because that's that arrogance factor. That's when ego pretty much takes over because you think of yourself so high to the point where you tell yourself that, oh, I already got a five in these AP exams, this college stuff. It's nothing. College is going to humble you real quick oh, yeah, because – for me in biology, while Eric saw improvement from first all the way up, I saw the opposite. I saw <laughs> it like a great grade. I got like my first biology exam. I got 98 yeah. on the first exam. And then it just went all the way down and I get 85 on my final exam, hmm. which it didn't really uh, take me down to a B because the labs really do help. Although when oh, you yeah. complain about it, it's, <laughs> it's very beneficial though. So yeah, I'm actually sure. glad they do have labs. Yeah. And honestly, like the next semester, my second semester, like for my first year, I actually started enjoying labs. Really? I actually started like, I, like when we we're talking about the mm. whole ecology stuff, I just loved learning about the cephalopods and the um, chordatas Cordata. and all that stuff. Ooh, like those, I treated it like a game, you know? Those protozoans. Like, yeah, like yeah, I, yeah. I thought of it as like, if I can go through this and I can memorize all of this, then I'll be able to memorize those other things in medical school. 
like for example pharmacology all mm. those drugs you yeah. know how boring that can get path you got to match it with patho now exactly. too exactly like there's yeah. going to be some boring stuff and you're just going to have to go through it that's another thing you have to realize as a pre med is that you can't choose your classes you can't choose the pathway you're going to take it's already set for you maybe it's not the perfect pathway because we had yeah. to take calculus and we honestly see no reason why we need to take calculus and, and history yeah yeah and, and even physics. And English. <laughs> Dude, as, as a matter of fact, people are even arguing that like chemistry is useless too. Like I don't know how. I mean, I, I honestly don't know. I really don't have an opinion on it since I'm just like a second year pre-med. Yeah. But a lot of people say that like some classes like chemistry, uh, even maybe organic chemistry, I've heard from uh, other upclassmen that it's pretty useless going into medical school because – in medical school, you really have to know like the anatomy, physiology, pathophysiology, pharmacology, and um, maybe it's just some other topic that we may not have experience to talk about or right. uh, a whole platform to talk about. But it's just maybe some of those classes you're just going to have to take and yeah. you're going to have to go through because you're going to be wasting your time complaining about that you have to take those classes. Right. You know how much time we wasted talking oh, about how man. we had to come take calculus? Man, I, I could have saved a, a couple of grades just yeah. by not complaining on, 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 on that stuff that we have to take anyway. Yeah. It's, it's, it's implemented. Um, you know, you, like, like we said earlier, you're not in the trenches alone. Mm -hmm. Everyone's in the trenches. Everyone's trying to get to that good high GPA, that high MCAT score. And instead of being like a gunner and just saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this by myself, you know, it's best to just, you know, I would, if I could go back, I would network a little bit more and, and help some other people out. And then, you know, you never know, you know, when you tutor somebody on that, you understand it better as well. And, you know, they learn and then they go and teach it to somebody and you guys all collab together and have study groups um, and, and, and stuff like that. And that's a good talk to talk about yeah. clubs, organizations, mm, yeah. like your first year. So um, what do you think? that some pre-meds should look at how they should find those or because i know a m had like that msc open house if you guys are going to a m then they're gonna have that msc oh, yeah, open check house that out for sure yeah you can check out pretty much every club that's what eric and i did but um if they're like not a m or if there's some other a university how do you think they should approach the whole finding clubs organizations group of friends things like that yeah that's a good question i'd say um, since, you know, most of you guys watching probably just graduated high school and you guys are preparing for the new student conference or the orientation most universities have. So I'd go there and then I'd like, I would just start beginning early on all these things. Like I said, um, not even just clubs, but, you know, just learning simple Excel shortcuts, uh, learning your way around those, those computers and those programs because they use them a lot at, at university. Um, also money management, just get ahead of on budgeting and stuff like that and how to have that responsibility. And I would start at the new student conference at the orientation. I would start there and just pick my advisor's brains or whoever's helping with orientation. I would be like, hey, I have a couple of questions. Could you help me out here? Um, is there a list of uh, clubs I can look at before the club uh, start advertising on campus that way you can get a general view and I know on most campuses they have the general ones that are always there like AMSA you're always going to have uh, the AMSA the American I don't know what it is it's a pre-med org that's it's in most campuses and then you have the pre-med org that's there you have a pre-dental org the pre-PA uh, org and you will the it's not that hard, honestly. They yeah. advertise, they make it known that they're there. Mm. Um, so just don't be afraid uh, to just explore those clubs too and finding your support group, like we say. So uh, if you're going to A&M, keep an eye out for Midporium Clubs. Yeah. We have great study sessions and great videos to help you in those chem videos. But I would start at the orientation, get a list, and check the Instagrams. If you mm. go onto your campus's Instagram, for example, A&M, uh, Texas A&M University, and you look at their clubs, you can find it on their followers, and then 
the clubs have their websites linked on their bio. So go to Instagram, check out their socials, check out if you like them and also see, you know, um, some of them cost money and some of them have like volunteer requirements. So yeah. just whatever floats your boat. Yeah. And um, sometimes you're not going to find your best org. You're not going to find mm-hmm. like, like um, Eric and I, we just worked on Medporium. That's pretty much all we did. Yeah. And uh, that's the org that we've been working on or the club you can think of for past three, four years. And that's what we love doing. But uh, finding those social groups, finding those organizations is really helpful. Just having just some friends, people to go through the journey, go through the battle is just very important. Yeah, go through the trenches. Yeah, go through the trenches. But um, that's pretty much some of the words that Eric was talking about. Uh, one of the words that I joined was called Gibber Leadership Conference, mm. which um, it was basically a going to a conference in Dallas. I mean, there's a whole, I, I might talk about a whole podcast about this whole thing, yeah. but uh, it was just a really good experience to meet a lot of people that are in the same grade level as you, maybe have, but also have different passions, different interests, mm. different things. It's that diversity in college that you really need. Because yeah. if we were, and this like just bland sort of topics and stuff, but it pretty much applies to college is that if we were all the same, then what's the point of then? I mean, it's just, it's, there's no use. It's just not special. You know, like if everyone, like, let's just say, for example, if everyone had an interest in entrepreneurship, just like us, mm-hmm. if everyone started their own nonprofit organization, if everyone is also doing day trading on the side, <laughs> yet still losing money on that. If everyone, <laughs> but if everyone, and if everyone's making content just like us and having the same beliefs as us, then it wouldn't be, what's the word? I'm going to put this in words. It wouldn't be the same. It wouldn't be yeah. competitive. Yeah. We don't know good words. We haven't taken English yet in college, but we, yeah, don't even talk about that. But we, it just doesn't. It just doesn't work. Damn, I can't find a good word for that. Yeah, no, I see, I see what you mean. Yeah, but you, yeah, hopefully you guys see what you, what I mean is that without diversity, there's no... Uh, Natural selection. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't know what to say. You, you guys know what I mean. Without diversity, then there's nothing good happening. So it's good to find those people that have a different major, that mm-hmm. have different interests, are in different groups and stuff. Just having those connections, having those diverse connections is what's going to be best and what's going to lead you uh, towards victory pretty much. Yeah, yeah. And that just that brings us to our first topic, which is networking as well. Um, now, let, let's sort of do like a general, let's just do like a quick wrap up of just some like rapid fire tips that we, we could just summarize on. Okay. And let's just let's dab into a little bit of like I know a lot of people were asking questions about you know off the rip just shadowing hours volunteering MCAT preparation oh like all the pre med stuff pre med stuff you know mm. so okay for me my quick wrap ups is balance find your mental and emotional and physical balance and also financial balance that too second is get to know your professors and your advisors firsthand. Hey, I'll bring them a coffee one day. They'll love it and pick their brain. Know how they schedule their, know how they make their exams and how they write their exams and how they do their homeworks yeah. too. Um, third is stay organized and uh, just you know make sure you have all those assignments listed and you know the due dates and you have them down um, because it's really easy to. You don't have much chances to make up that grade if you fall down. There's very little chance of error. Uh, fourth is to just uh, get used to your campus. Visit there multiple times if you can in a, instead of just after orientation. Even after orientation, just go and explore a little bit more. Know your classes those first couple of days and see um, see where they are so you're not late. Yeah. And be punctual, be on time. Fifth, I'd say learn how to cook if you don't have a dining plan. Mm. And if you're not living in a dorm, if you're living alone, no, you know, know, know how to cook. And that comes with all the other tips to know beforehand. You have, a, you have a chunk of summertime to prepare. And I'd take this time, if I could go back, to just get used to Excel sheets, get very tech savvy, um, get used to the AI. You know, there's certain rules you have to meet to use AI. So just keep an eye on that too. 
um, the syllabus, all that, the tips, how to cook, how to just take care of yourself uh, times two of what you were doing in high school. Yeah. How about you? So I'm going to give more tips about like psychology. Okay. Because yeah. I'm thinking of this like, you know how we talk about trading psychology. I have to say discipline, don't take bad trades, For take sure. high quality yeah. trades. So it's kind of similar to that, but study psychology. So one of the tips I'd say is that realize that the first semester in college isn't going to be your best semester and that's totally fine. Mm -hmm. Second thing I'd say is it's okay to fail. Maybe you got straight A's in high school without studying, but in college you failed even if you studied. That's okay. You get to learn from that failure and that's what college is all about, exposing you a little bit to the real world where when you're put in this downside, when you're put in this failure, how do you respond to it? That's pretty much all, right. all of what college is about, is how you're responding to these situations you're put in, which is what hopefully will prepare you in real life. So that's number two. Number three, I'd say, is stay disciplined and have some core rules that you follow. Yeah. And these are like strict rules towards your mental and physical health, like exercising an hour every day, maybe might be something for your maybe three to four times a week. Exercise is just so important. I mean, we might even have a podcast oh, yeah. talking about the benefits of just exercise, not only physically, but mentally. also like neurally, like mentally and stuff. So have those set rules like exercising, eating well, eat as much, eat as healthy as possible. Mm. Because if you're always eating junk food, you're always eating like chips, you're skipping uh, meals that maybe you're not really used to skipping. Maybe like there's some people that can intermittent fast and just skip breakfast and stuff. Right, yeah, yeah. But if you're not that type of person, you skip breakfast or you skip lunch and you know you're not supposed to, then that's going to have a bad just gonna, that's going to put you at a disadvantage in terms of studying, paying attention in class, things like that. So you have to understand your body. You have to understand that you need to fuel yourself with the right foods. You need to f stay away from this processed foods, junk foods. Now, I'm not saying that you should stay away from them totally because I mean, we still eat it. It's oh, still yeah. enjoyable. It's water burger. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And uh, just try to limit yourself in those Parts. So having those strict rules, um, another rule I'd say is that try to sleep at the same time and wake up at the same time oh, yeah. as commonly as possible because sleep is one of the greatest things you can do in order for your mental health, your physical health and academics in general is that if you sleep, you will have good grades. I mean, this has been scientifically proven. For sure. Yeah. So having those hardcore rules and following them is what you need to do to build that discipline in college and pretty much do well as a pre-medical student. Now, the fourth thing I would talk about is don't compare yourself to others. And I know that's like a bland statement to say, you know, a lot of people say just don't compare yourself to others, but it's easy to say hard to do. Hmm. And the way that I've been able to navigate that is I realized that whatever that person thinks, how is that going to impact my life? Will that get me better grades? Will that make me more money? Will that get me closer to becoming a doctor, which is what I ultimately want to become? Right. Will that do any of that? No, it won't. Their opinion won't change who you want to become. Their opinion won't benefit you in any way. So why should you even care about it? Why should you care about what other people are doing? Maybe they're going to Mexico during spring break or they're partying and you might have that massive FOMO or right. they might even have better grades than you and you have this imposter syndrome, which we definitely talk, we should talk oh, about. Oh yeah, the imposter podcast. syndrome. But we're just talk, just touching on it. But just those things, when you compare yourself to others, that's when your grades will plummet. That's when your mental health will plummet because you're not only valuing the opinions of others, valuing the life or the values of others, but you're also doing that without realizing that that person is much more different than you. You might be better at something that they're not as good at. You might have, um, you might have abilities that they might not have. You might have privileges that they might not have, or they might have privileges that you might have. That's why you can't compare yourself to others because we're all different. We don't come from the same background, same mindset. So, that's another thing I talk about for just study psychology, but that's pretty much it for my side. But 
That concludes our first episode for the MedPoint Podcast. Hopefully, you guys, we answered you guys' questions. And leave some questions down below in the comments so we can make me more podcast episodes, answer yeah. those questions, help you guys on the pre-med side. And if you guys have any more questions, you can DM us on Instagram at medporium, med, med.porium, right? Med.porium. Med.porium, yes. yeah. Med so you guys can shoot us a DM. Any questions you have, we'd be love to help. But as always, a Pomodoro day will make you a doctor someday. We'll see you guys, see you guys. next one.